me, the Carver Air by my Air. The desktop CNC machine that does it all. Whether you're working with two axis, three axis, fourth axis, or even the laser module, this machine's got you covered. It's as easy to operate as your favorite 3D printer, <coughs> Bamboo Labs, but with the power and versatility of a full CNC powerhouse. So I'm gonna show you how you can transform raw material into an absolute stunning finished product with absolute ease. So let's dive in and see how I did it. So let's now go over the machine. This is the Carver Air. And the hood opens up like this. You lift up and then you slide back and then it tilts. And so this way it doesn't have as high of a lid if it had to tip all the way up. It's a clever design to save space. So in this machine, let me just turn off the light bar real quick because I pretty much have a light bar set up right now. So let me show you because this machine's actually really bright on the inside. A common issue that I've said with 3D printers aren't really that bright. So let me turn it off quick. So this is what it looks like with the hood down. And this is a tinted hood. So when you lift it up, it is a bit brighter in there. But I mean, this thing is just super, super bright. I might even have to turn down the settings. But it's nice because you can actually see what you're working with. And while it's machining, you can see what you want. You can switch these lights off if you want it to be a dark environment and you don't want to deal. But let's get the lights back on and go over this machine. All right, so it's build. I'm gonna say build a lot and print, but it's okay because I've named it printer. So when I say printer, it's not actually wrong. It's just the name of it, so it's okay. But it's cutting or milling volume in the third axis is 11.8 inches this way or 30 centimeters by 7.9 inches in the Y axis or 20 centimeters, 5.1 inches or 13 centimeters in this axis. The machine weighs about 66 pounds or 30 kilograms. You can see right here, you can attach this phone holder on either side of the machine. I've placed on this side phone or tablet holder, I guess. But right now I'm not using it just because I am using my computer as the interface. This is the kill switch up here, but you can move it and place it as you want. I just like to leave it right there so it's on the machine because you're going to run over and it's probably where you'd hit it. I do think it fell off the machine on one of my, pr of my machining processes and may have turned it off. So maybe better to put it on the ground if you can. So let's go around the back of the machine. And right here, you can see this vacuum tube in our air assist. And this will feed into the back of the machine. It goes up and over and feeds in the back and we'll show that in a second. This is your little magnetic clip on. There you go. So now, if you wanna actually have clean parts and clean machining, you can have it on or pop it off, stick your tube in the holder and you can pop your magnetic vacuuming shroud off. So let's move around the machine. These are super sturdy. This machine isn't like a 3D printer where it's a bed slinger. It is moving a bit slower, but I will say it has a super, super sturdy construction where everything is just solid. I mean, this thing is not moving around much when it prints. Prints. Coming around the side, I'm gonna actually flip this lid back down. So you come around the side of this machine and you can see right here, this is where you put your air assist and this is your vacuum port right here. Around the back of the machine, you have your data port right there, charging, which you can also use for your vacuum, which I will show later on. And then you have your e-stop. I'm not exactly sure what that one's actually for. Inside the machine and back here, I'll show it. It's actually, it's hiding in the corner. But there is your, two four, your 220 and your 110 switch right back there. It's not on the back of the machine where a lot of them typically are. And then this side of the machine is just a mirror of the other side. So going on to the inside of the machine once again, you have your handle right here. This is what you actually pull for changing tools and inserting your Z-probe axis, which actually sits right here. It's very clever where it sits pop it in and you can get your Z-axis heights. Very nice and convenient having it tucked right there for easy storage. It has linear guide rails for the Z-axis, which is pretty nice. Like I said, this machine does not move around much at all. Wire cables are all tucked away nicely. And like I said, you can see how bright it actually is in this machine. It is super bright. I already have my cover on. So this is what the bed would look like stock. It's just this nice, Nice bed material right there with aluminum underneath. So in the back corner, you have your touch probe right there. Just how it figures out 
your tool length and such. This indicator light right here will actually change depending on the process. While it's printing, it will actually be green and it's kind of cool because it'll match the ring around the room. When it needs a tool change, it will flash blue, but it will be a broken line. And if there's an error, it will flash red. This way you can just glance at the machine, but you are supposed to be watching this machine the whole time it's working. So watch it. The air assist nozzle right here is actually adjustable. So this way, depending on your tool length, you can just go like this and adjust where your air assist is coming in. Let's go over this machine and talk a little bit about its capabilities and the things that came with it. For starters, I mentioned that it has second, third, fourth, and laser capabilities. So as you can see here, this is an add-on that you can buy that I highly recommend. It's a five watt laser module that allows you to engrave surfaces like wood, leather, plastics, cardboard, and the softer materials. There's a laser module right here. I did destroy this box when I was looking at it before. I got a little bit excited, I will say. And then the other thing I mentioned is the fourth axis module. This is super awesome for doing parts that you want to do like cylindrical parts or when you want to do super precise like models or maybe some uh, offensive gestures that involve hands and fingers, but we're working on that. So stay tuned. But this is actually a block that I machined down to make it exactly two and a half by two and a half by five. So this is what I'm going to actually work on the fourth module. I haven't had the ability to do it yet, but it is coming. Another thing that I haven't been able to test that is a super, super cool feature about this machine is the PCB fabrication pack. This allows you to make your own PCB boards. So for a lot of people, this is really, really cool where before you would have to send them out and get them made, you can now just make them in-house. You can make your own PCBs right here in a couple of hours versus having to wait maybe a couple days versus a couple weeks, maybe even a couple months. So super cool, really capable with those three packs right here. Then what's included is you get accessories, which gives you your goggles, your power cable, your spare bit color and tool bits, foam holder and stuff like that. What it also includes, and this was super important for me and a very crucial thing, it included a backup limit switch, which I put in the backup screw pack. But it has a spare limit switch, which actually mine was damaged. And it was the one in this Y axis underneath the machine. But I imagine it's just a fluke. Things like this just typically do happen to me. So at this point, it's not a surprise. But having a spare one off the rip was essential. You know, I, I slapped a new one in there and I was ready to go with the machine. So it's super cool that they put it in there and a really big selling point that, you, you know, you get some extra goodies and going through. Extra goodies do include bits. There are... 10 spare bits in there, and I think it's just a couple assorted bits. Actually, I think I, yeah. I already moved those to my uh, my other bits, so I will show you my bits later. Then, next you get the tool kit, which includes, actually, I'll show you this here. It's this nice little tool kit you get here, and I have all of my clamps and tools in here. It also includes 10 bits in there, basically your common bits, and I'm assuming those are the spare ones. I think those are the spare ones. Like I said, I just, I dumped them into my bits collection. And this was the early milling bits bundle. So now there's the essential bits bundle, and I can't recommend it enough. It has so many useful bits where you, whenever you switch projects where you're like, oh, now I'm gonna, you're gonna need a bit. Well, this has got you covered. And if you're like me and you're coming into this and you've never owned a CNC machine before, well, Having a bunch of bits is really important. So lastly, you get the material pack, the materials pack, and this includes, oh, let's read down the list, shall we? Waste board, uh, which is right here. I do already have one of those installed on the machine, which is why it's this color on the bottom. It's kind of cardboard. It's two mil thick, so this way you don't cut into your building material. So I, I've taken a lot of these things out. I've actually had this machine for about three months, and I've done quite a bit of machining. This is a review, so I had to go through and test it. I decided I wasn't gonna do an unboxing because I wasn't gonna bore you guys with that. But nonetheless, it has two waste boards, single-sided PCB, double-sided PCB, acrylic plate, ABS plastic plate, aluminum plate, which I have made good use of, I will show you that soon, epoxy tooling board, sand, sanding block, mini handsaw, double-sided tape, and a LED light assembly kit. So. 
there is a little bundle in there where you get to build your own project right off the rip as well. So it gives you a lot of really cool things and I cannot recommend these bundles enough just because it's going to help you out so much in the future when you have different projects that you just want to start working on or things that you might not have thought you were going to do, but now you're capable of doing that. So can't recommend them enough. Let's now dig into the machine and see what it has to offer. I also want to say that while this machine was sent to me for review and testing, I actually was the one who messaged that. I thought this would be a great addition to the channel because we work on a lot of projects that you guys kind of roast me for saying, why isn't this metal? Well, until now, I haven't been able to make a lot of my projects out of aluminum or different materials. So now we're able to do that. And a huge shout out to Matt Harris. So thank you. Make sure to check them out because right now they're on sale. This machine is $2,400, I think, up until the 27th. And if you guys use my discount code in the link below, you get an extra $100 off. So grab yours before the deal ends and make sure to give them a big thanks for sponsoring the channel. This allows us to do some really crazy things. I'm thinking maybe a little Tesla turbine. I don't know. What do you guys want to see? Let me know. So as far as the machine goes and what I have to say about it, well, I give it a glowing review. Minus the one little thing of that limit switch, which they gave you a spare. And the only other issue I've had is this magnet popped off right here, but I'm not exactly sure. It, it fits so snug on here anyway that it doesn't seem like it's been an issue, but I am just gonna super glue it back on. That's not a big thing. So those are the two minor things I have against it. Uh, the only other thing that I would say is I had an issue in the slicer, as I'm gonna call it, I don't know if that's the proper name, or the cam, I guess the cam software, and the cam software with long processing times, but I am talking to Macara right now, and we're going to sort these things out. So it's only gonna get better, and that's a software thing, so those can always improve over time. So as far as hardware goes, a broken limit switch and a magnet that popped off is all I have to say after months of machining and multiple mishaps on my part. Oh. So, instead of just telling you about the projects, why don't I just show you some of the projects that I've done and just let you see for yourself what this machine is capable of doing. So I am going to warn you in the beginning that, like I said, this is my first CNC machine and my first CNC work. So some of these things were mistakes, but were essential for learning. This was supposed to be my first print or print, my first cut, which was going to be a fidget spinner. And it did cut beautifully, did absolutely great, except I had the tool path on the wrong side of the line. So I totally mess up this fidget spinner. What I want to show because it did a beautiful, beautiful job cutting. And it was the first one. So fail, but a great learning experience. The second thing I did was this little mountain range that I found because I want to see. And this is a lot of material that was removed from this machine. basically is cut out all the way through. It only has just a tiny, tiny bit of material left. I could just peel it off and sand it down if I want to, but I like to show how much material was in the beginning. This was a three quarter inch thick by two inch, two and a half inch wide by I think five inch long block. So it is a pretty big block of aluminum and it did a awesome job machining this down. Next up, I made myself a little plaque because recently we passed a thousand subscribers. So huge thank you to you guys for helping with this. And Macara helped out with making this little plaque. It is a little bit hard to see, but I mean, you can see this mirror finish. It is a really, really bright finish on this, but it is an absolutely gorgeous plaque. This probably would have been a case for laser engraving. And I think I'm gonna have to redo it, try again. Then came the first, ironically enough, I started with all aluminum and then went to wood. And this is where I really learned. You can see this is not a very level block of wood. This side, this corner sits much higher. If you look like this, it sits significantly higher than this corner. So before I figured out the whole Z probe and this little guy right there, I absolutely ran this tool head through and a lot of them got erased in here, but there's still evidence of one right here. There's one right here, deep cut and one there. I think there were a couple 
bunch of other ones. So I did have to learn my lesson with that. Always set it on the highest point and then work your way down, which you can see we did get there eventually. It was just a great learning experience. Now comes the part that I think is the most interesting. This is one of the components of my DIY dual shower kit. It is made out of fully aluminum because I figured I just pop one screw in there just to hold it together to show you guys. But if you've been on my Etsy or on the channel long enough, you might recognize this. It is extremely sharp. It's actually like a knife's edge on this point. But I decided to make this out of aluminum because I'll show you why. It incorporates almost all of the processes that you can do with this machine, other than fourth axis and laser, but it has contours, cuts, threading, holes, and really, really intricate profiles. You can see on this top one, I went even finer. So I decided to play around with these numbers and values to see what I could get. And this is the comparison. This is, I grabbed just two different colors of it. This is one of the silver ones, and this is the white half. But basically I typically 3D print these. The kit is all 3D printed. I'm almost debating if I should do a limited run. I didn't mess it up on the last cut. It did fall out of the machine and uh, plunge through, but I figured you guys uh, wouldn't wouldn't notice this. So I, I, I figured, you know, that you wouldn't notice it. But I figured I'd make this entirely out of aluminum and I wanna say it turned out pretty dang well. So let's get it split apart, dig into it and show you what it looks like on the inside and the processes involved. All right, we're just gonna take it apart here quick. Why oh, I put this one in snug. All right, so one half has a through hole and one half is threaded. I'm gonna show you guys different features. This is the threaded one and it's the one I started with. So the cuts are a little bit more rough. This is where I played with the values and really started to get the process down. So I think if I redid this, I'd probably get it a little bit cleaner and I'd probably get the threads a bit cleaner as well. But nonetheless, let's go through and show the capabilities because while it might not be the most beautiful thing in the world, it was the first one and it worked off the bat. So, this is the one that I said is a little bit more rough and clearly that's evident. But it has the threads and you can see inside, that is where it threaded the holes. And then this one is where it has the through holes and it is a lot finer machining. This side is actually the finest. I think I went with a 0.22 step over and I mean it's actually a mirror finish, it's just a little it's a little dirty now, but the thing is basically a mirror finish on it, which is a bit too fine for something that you're never gonna see when it's assembled, considering the outside is a pretty rough step over. And it looks like this would be jagged, but you actually can't feel this. It's actually smooth to the touch, which is really funny, because when you look at it like this, it almost looks like waves, but it's perfectly smooth. Beautiful finish on this. So you can go through, make your parts, and assemble it. The only thing left to do would be make some hooks, and while I said this didn't incorporate the fourth axis, the other part of the machining would require the fourth axis, so should I make a limited run of these kits, maybe like five of them? They do require quite some time in machining, probably on my end, but it's something I'm willing to do. Drop a comment below. So I hope this was a pretty good review and showed the capabilities of this machine. There's a lot more to come, and I just want to give a huge shout out again to Macera. Thank you for sponsoring this video, and let me know what you guys want to see in the build videos. I th I'm thinking, like I said, a Tesla turbine would be pretty fitting. You can machine the disc pretty nice, you can get nice acrylic housing, and it seems like a pretty good way to go. But if you guys have been around the channel for a while, you know I always test your comments first. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your thoughts are on this machine. If you guys want to see any videos, anything more in specific, any detailed thoughts, let me know. I'd love to hear it. So. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.